In Boston, it begins. The first earth fall. People run in panic until a voice calls out. Avengers, assemble! Our heroes move in, not sure where this thing came from. Hercules, who has battled many beasts in his time, does not recognize it. But it looks like the fight will at least be fun. The heroes race to protect civilians, many of whom are falling as buildings collapse throughout the city. Thor moves in and knocks the beast off balance. Vision begins a scan to see if it survived the attack, when... Our heroes attack, and it becomes clear the monsters know how to work together. Luckily, so do the Avengers. However, Vision has bad news. He is detecting similar reports from all around the world. London, Wakanda, Seattle, Venice, New York. This is a coordinated strike. In Italy, Karnak observes this and declares they are in trouble. It is a simple matter to defeat one beast. But this... This was foretold. Devil Dinosaur and Moon Girl observe this happening, and the young girl tells her companion to relax. Even he couldn't fight all these monsters, and right now, the heroes of Earth seem to have it covered. They have a different mission. Someone needs to figure out just what's going on here. In Springfield, Missouri, a boy named Kay is quietly drawing as the news tells of the massive invasion. He pays this no mind, and his mom calls up asking him if he's okay or scared. He says he's fine, and besides, he's a little busy. In Los Angeles, the champions fight one of the monsters. Together, they save the civilians while the Hulk manages to smash it down. Knowing this is happening all over the world, the team gets ready to move out. Miss Marvel says they're going to need to find a monster expert. Back in Boston, a figure looks over some ancient texts. Dark prophecy is told of this day. The message is clear. This is the end of the world. Or, you know, one of them at least. The figure goes to a portal. After all, who wouldn't want to front row seat? Her name is Elsa Bloodstone. Her father taught her a lot of things, but one thing sticks out in her mind more than anything else. There's always a way to take down a monster. She travels underground past a series of traps and ruins until she finds an ancient cave drawing depicting this day. She spies something interesting, a single person the monsters fear and obey, a ruler among the beasts, calling them down to earth. Elsa's family, the Bloodstones, took it upon themselves to fight supernatural threats. She should have been ready for this. She should have seen this coming. So now it's time to set things right. Back in Springfield, Kay sneaks outside. In the woods, a voice calls out to him, and he loses his footing. Standing before him are a clutch of monsters. Fang Fang Foom speaks out. Whatever game this boy is playing, whatever he hopes to accomplish by summoning them, it will not end well. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Monsters Unleashed number one. Well, holy crap, that was great. Really, I just love this. I had been looking forward to this comic for some time, and I think it delivered so well, I was impressed with a comic I already assumed was going to be good. Colin Bunn has been a pretty consistent writer in my experience, and he did a great job here. I enjoy how he kicked things off right away with this story and title premise. It's a big old monster brawl through and through, and there's a lot of great images and panels to reflect that. Our heroes cut loose, while the general tone and nice little details pay homage to the kaiju films this story clearly draws inspiration from. The art team deserves a ton of praise. Steve McNubbin does a great job, surprising nobody, but I think the inker Jay Leaston also nicely preserved the detail, while colorist David Curiel used contrast to effectively display action in a way that is easy to follow and to keep pace with. That's incredibly important. I can't count how many crossover events suffer from messy art that's hard to discern and blends together after a while. This art is crisp, clean, and colorful, and it makes all the difference in the world. As a start to a crossover event, it's pretty much perfect. The wonderfully simple yet kind of brilliant premise means that we focus on characters, and Colin Bunn does a great job in taking advantage of that. I like how there's a focus on Elsa Bloodstone, she's always cool, and even Spider-Man has some great moments. 
When was the last time Spider-Man just got to have a fun, banter-filled fight without being saddled with any of his usual nonsense? I agree with him when he kind of jokingly comments that the heroes don't get to fight enough giant monsters anymore, and this story just feels so refreshing and fun. It's a shot in the arm I think Marvel really needed. I also think it's cool how some of the more established monsters like Fing Fang Foom and Devil Dinosaur have a more active role in this story than as just another opponent for our heroes. That's smart too. Superheroes doing superhero things. Controversial, I know, but somehow it works. Who would have thought? I really like the atmosphere behind this. We have the Avengers, Inhumans, Guardians of the Galaxy, and the X-Men, along with several other heroes and factions, all responding to this big worldwide event. You know, kind of like what a big crossover should be like. It's really cool after so much internal strife and conflict to have our heroes working together, but the moment does feel a little fleeting. It's a rare spot in Marvel's continuity where all the teams happen to be on Earth at the same time. It won't last, but the comic really makes me wish that it would. This opening really had me thinking, oh, okay, I know I've criticized them in the past, but we finally have our new Avengers actually working together to do something. That's a treat, but it's weird that it feels so rare. Then I realized it really felt like this was the first time after Secret Wars that our heroes are actually working together against a big threat like this. It's been like a year, and yet we haven't really done anything like this yet. Suddenly it occurred to me. This story would have been the best possible way to have followed up on Secret Wars. Do you know how much I would have been gushing over this thing if it had, instead of Civil War 2? We would have been able to settle in with some of our new characters and the team's rosters, and get them doing something memorable together. I know I keep going back to it, but it's just amazing to me that this is the first time they've been united post-Secret Wars, and especially when we consider they were not united before Secret Wars. Putting Monsters Unleashed before Civil War II would have worked better in the meta-narrative, and it would have been a smart to do so instead of diving straight into the big conflict like Civil War II. Monsters Unleashed is shaping up to be a great event, perhaps one of the best in recent history. But in my opinion, the timing of its release is just terrible and the only really bad thing about it. This comic is solid and would almost turn an unqualified recommendation for me, but sadly I can't. If you are up for yet another Marvel crossover event, then yes, Monsters Unleashed number one is definitely worth it. If you're tired of them, well yeah, who could blame you? Marvel's been so relentless with this stuff, and after dragging out Civil War 2 for so long, it really feels like I'm just jumping from one big event to the next. I don't mind, because giant monsters are fun and I'm hoping this event works out better than Civil War 2, but I'm also aware of how great I thought the first issue of Civil War 2 was, and we all saw how that kind of turned out. So of course, we'll have to see. But right now, issue 1 was a solid start and really has me looking forward to number 2. I can get past the event fatigue, look past the greater issues within Marvel itself, and truly enjoy this story for what is. If you feel that you can too, then by all means, definitely check this comic out for yourself. If not, well I understand. Like I said, who could blame you? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching this video! If you like Comic Island and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page for exclusive perks and a say in the comics we review. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.